Beef steak pie. Have you ever heard of beef steak pie? It sounds delicious, but it's not like you can go to a restaurant and purchase it. It turns out in the 18th century, it was incredibly popular in almost every single cookbook. It's simple, it's savory, and it's got a smell to die for. Let's make a beef steak pie from 1747. I find it interesting that there are no recipes quite like this in American cookery today. Now, you will find the descendants of this in British cooking, the famous steak and kidney pudding or steak and kidney pie. But a steak and kidney pie is a lot more complex. It's got the beef in it, it's got the kidney in it, and then many times you'll have things like carrots or potatoes, onions. This is the stripped down version of this. It is just a beef steak pie. It is that simple. There's hardly any components to it. And in American cookery today, we still do have the chicken pot pie. That's kind of like that steak and kidney pudding. It has the potatoes and the carrots and it kind of a really thick gravy inside there. And in the 18th century, its ancestor was the chicken pie, which just has chicken and salt and pepper and that's it inside the pie crust. So in a sense, we still have something like this steak pie, but it's so much more complicated. It's great to watch this dish evolve through time. They're a very different dish in the 17th century, very plain. We maybe add something like a lot of butter and that's about it. And then as we get into the 19th century, that's when the real changes happen. Onions added, then we get potatoes and carrots until it turns into that full pot pie idea in the 19th and 20th century. Beefsteak pie recipes seem to fill up the cookbooks from the 17th, 18th, and 19th century. We find them all over. The one that's copied the most is the one from Hannah Glass. That's what we're gonna to use today. It's so incredibly simple. It goes a beefsteak pie. Take fine rump steaks, beat them with a rolling pin, then season them with salt and pepper according to your palate. Make a good crust, lay in your steaks, fill your dish, then pour in as much water as will half fill the dish. Put on the crust, bake it well. Hannah Glass in this recipe calls for a good crust. Pie crusts are easy. You can go out and buy a pie crust at the store. I guess that's okay. But what I want you to do, I want you to make your own pie crust. It's gonna be so much better. And I'm gonna show you how. We need unbleached all-purpose flour. We need some butter. We need it to be cold and cold water also. And the ratio we want here is three to one by weight. So I'm using about, let's say 21 ounces of flour and seven ounces of butter. In a modern kitchen, we would cut this in with a special kind of knife. In our 18th century kitchen, we just have to rub this butter into the flour and we want to make sure we're not melting that butter. So we're just grabbing up little bits very quickly, smashing it together, squeezing it, dropping it, and then moving on to a different section. So just don't melt that butter, keep it nice and cool as much as possible. I think one of the reasons why this shows up in so many places because it's so incredibly easy. All you really need is the beef, a little bit of spice, and, and of course pie crust. That's easy to come by. And you could adjust it easily. You could make a small pie or a big pie. You could use meat that was left over in certain situations. And it's versatile enough that if you want to stretch this out a little bit, you don't want to use as much beef, you could add those vegetables into a pie like this. The cuts of beef in the 18th century were likely to be tougher, so she tenderizes this. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with these cuts, although they may not need it. I'm also gonna remove some of this stringy connective tissue because it'll make it difficult to cut. Also, this is your opportunity to switch it up a little bit. You probably don't need the most expensive cuts of beef in here because they're gonna bake at a low and slow temperature. So it will make something that is slightly tougher, a little more tender anyway. So we can mix it up like the recipes did in the 18th century. We're gonna stick pretty much with this recipe, although adding some butter that they do in many of the other recipes. But if it were me, I would probably take that water and mix it 50-50 with mushroom ketchup. That will add a lot of wonderful flavor in there. And of course, in there is nutmeg and that, that finishes up a dish like this. But what would you add if you were making a beefsteak pie? 
Right before we put the lid on, we pour the water in and we fill it up about half full. We could use something fancier. We could use like a beer or an ale here. We don't want something bitter or even a cider, but almost all the recipes just call for water and it's gonna steam that meat as it cooks inside the pie crust. Now we can put the top on. I've wetted the edge a little bit. We want it to seal because we want to seal in as much as possible. We put the lid on, we crimp it down nice and tightly. I'm gonna put two small vent holes. It will probably puff up a little bit with all that steam and we don't want it to burst open. We wanna have a little bit of vent there. The recipe calls for this to be baked well. So we have any number of ways we can do that, especially in the 18th century. One of the ways we could use, especially if we were in camp, is a Dutch oven or a camp oven. They're the slow cooker of the 18th century, and it's so very simple. We put a few coals around the bottom and a few coals on the top. We don't want this to cook too fast. We're aiming for something like 350 degrees, maybe even a little bit lower. So we would put the coals around the top. We would gently rotate this every, say, 15 or 20 minutes. And we would check it to make sure it's not getting too hot and then renew the coals as they start to burn out. And we need to bake this as long as two hours. Depends on how big your pie is really. So a smaller pie, you probably don't have to bake quite as long. We're going to be using our earthen oven and that's a challenge too because it's a long baking time and if your oven's rather small then the ramp of temperature is fairly quick. So I've got to start it and get it to about 400, maybe 450 degrees, leave it in there two hours. By the time it's done, the oven will probably be down to 250 degrees or so. So it's gonna take a while to bake this. In our modern oven, this is super easy. We're just gonna put this in the oven and it'll automatically keep that temperature at whatever you set it, probably let's say 325 and a pie like this, at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours of cooking time. For either situation, the earthen oven or the Dutch oven, we don't want this to burn on the bottom of our pie pan, so we have to lift the pie pan off the bottom, and we need a trivet for that. We can use something simple like this triangular trivet, and that will let air circulate under the bottom and keep it from getting hot. So the bottom of our oven might be you know, 500 degrees because the coals are right underneath that. We don't want it to burn the bottom of our pie. So trivet will work perfectly in this or the earthen oven. It baked for two hours and it smells amazing. And when I cut open to this, you can, you can see all the gravy down there. So you almost need a spoon to make sure to you know, bring gravy back up onto your, your served slices or pieces. Sometimes these things, you just kind of scoop it out of there, put it on the plate, and wow. Um, I put lots of pepper on here. I love pepper. Um, and uh, you, know, you can just tell from the smell, it's gonna have this incredible beefy flavor to it. Whoa. That is intensely good. Crust worked out perfect, and it absorbed all that gravy, and the meat is just tender enough, just right. This is incredible.